Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. If you're looking to amplify some sort of acoustic instrument, then you have one of two options in capturing the audio signal. You could either use microphones or some kind of electric pickup. While microphones are the logical choice in the studio, they can be a bit impractical for live performances, so onboard pickups and acoustic instruments are very common. While a steel stringed instrument can make use of magnetic pickups similar to a solid body electric guitar, these cannot pick up the string vibrations from nylon stringed instruments. So another type of pickup is more commonly utilised. Piezo pickups feature on all sorts of acoustic instruments and some solid body electrics too. But what are piezo pickups? How do they work? And why are they so popular on acoustic instruments? I'm here at 42 Gear Street to find out more. Let me briefly catch you up to speed before we get into the technical details in case you've never heard of a piezo pickup before. Piezo pickups make physical contact with the guitar, typically under the bridge or attached to some other vibrating surface. They directly change the vibrations of the strings and body into an electric signal. This differs from magnetic pickups which sends the steel core of strings passing through the magnetic field of the pickup, perturbing the flux and inducing a signal in the coil. Since nylon strings lack steel cores, magnetic pickups can't sense those strings and direct contact piezo pickups are a more convenient way to go. Piezo pickups are named after the scientific principle on which they operate, the piezoelectric effect. I thought I'd start off here by asking some of the YouTubers if they know anything about the physics of the piezoelectric effect. I have no idea, can I take a guess? All I know is that something about the, the, the pressure, is this the piezoelectric effect? Uh, I don't know exactly how it works other than when something vibrates it, it seems to create an electrical output. Uh, turns the, the uh, it makes, it creates a, an electric signal somehow. I know so little about the piezo effect that I don't even know how it's pronounced correctly. Like hearing you say it is a shock to me because I thought it was piezo. And you, I think you were trying to explain to me it's a, it's a changing of something that happens in there. It's like it flips and flops and flops and flips. Ceramic-y, ceramic -y thing and then it's pushy pushy and then something with electricy, electricy. It's a contact microphone, so it somehow turns vibration into electrical current. Well, piezoelectricity is a phenomenon where mechanical energy is applied to a certain crystalline substance and electricity is generated out of that as some kind of a weird effect and whatnot. We can exploit that uh, with guitars when you apply string energy to said crystalline substance. I'm going to take a wild guess. That's what a piezo pickup is. And that's how you get your sound. So it's kind of neat and they use it in a whole, a whole bunch of different things. And um, that's about all I know over the briefly stuff I scanned on Wikipedia real quick before I came on this. This is a really long way of saying that I don't know shit about it and I'm sorry for wasting your time. The word piezo comes from the Greek, meaning to squeeze. Materials which exhibit the piezoelectric effect are capable of generating voltage when a mechanical stress is applied to them. In 1880, scientists discovered that some naturally occurring crystals, like quartz, are capable of generating an electric charge when percussive pressure is applied. So while it's quite impossible to squeeze blood from a stone, it's well within our capabilities to squeeze electricity from one. Two world wars in the first half of the 20th century boosted research and development of piezoelectric devices, with man-made materials being created to maximise the effect. These piezoelectric transducers are an example of this development. Within this disc is a man-made piezoelectric medium. When I hook these lead wires up to my voltmeter and squeeze the transducer, you can see the voltage reading change. The harder I squeeze, the larger the voltage that is generated. By securing one of these transducers under the bridge saddles of a guitar and strumming the strings, we can see the voltage reading change on the meter as the vibrations penetrate the piezo transducer. We have now transformed the string vibration into an electric audio signal. But how does squeezing a crystal give us electricity? To understand this, we need to look at some basic chemistry, discover dipole moments and polar molecules within crystals. For simplicity's sake, let's go back to our good friend quartz, or to give it its molecular name, silicon dioxide. The molecular form of silicon dioxide consists of a single silicon atom bonded to two oxygen atoms in this arrangement. 
When atoms form molecular bonds, they share some of their electrons with each other, but they don't always do so in a fair and equal manner. In the case of silicon dioxide, these shared electrons are far more likely to be found with the oxygen atoms than the silicon atom, which means frequently, although momentarily, the oxygen ends of the molecule will have a slightly more negative charge, and the silicon a slightly more positive charge. This produces two dipole moments, directional charges within the molecule. But the molecule as a whole remains non-polar as these two dipoles cancel each other out due to the symmetry of the structure. However, if we could somehow deform this structure, breaking the symmetry, then we could introduce a distinct charge separation. Silicon dioxide doesn't really exist as individual molecules though. It forms huge geometric crystalline lattices, hence the beautiful faceted macro appearance of quartz. When quartz crystals form, all of these dipoles arrange themselves symmetrically in different directions, cancelling each other out and giving the crystal as a whole no distinct charge direction. However, when mechanical stresses are applied to the crystal, in other words, when we squeeze it, it forces the crystal structure to deform, causing the dipoles to orient away from their equilibrium position, resulting in a charge imbalance in the crystal. The more we squeeze, the more prominent the effect becomes. Now the crystal as a whole has a charged direction. One side is more negatively charged and the other more positively charged. This creates a potential difference between the two faces of the crystal. We have created a voltage by exploiting dipole geometry in a normally nonpolar substance. Interestingly, the inverse is also true. By applying a voltage to a quartz crystal, you can cause it to flex and vibrate by very tiny amounts. In fact, it does so with such incredible regularity that quartz is used inside mechanical clock and watch mechanisms to keep the hands rhythmically ticking. Okay, so what does all this have to do with guitars? Well, piezo pickups are made from these piezoelectric crystals and are typically placed on a vibrating surface of the guitar, typically under the bridge where the string vibrations are the strongest. When the strings are plucked, this sends mechanical stresses through the bridge and into the piezo pickup. The vibrations disturb the orientation of the dipoles, generating voltages that are in relation to the amplitude and frequency of the acoustic vibrations. These voltages form the audio signal, which is amplified by the onboard preamp and then sent onto the front of house recording interface or to further amplification. Here at 42 Gear Street, I met up with Julian from Ortega Guitars to discuss piezo pickups and the challenges in amplifying nylon stringed instruments. The one thing is, uh, as you already mentioned, um, there are no C strings on it, so you can't use magnets. So for this kind of uh, guitar, um, we use um, piezos because um, they're not working like, like a magnet. They work with the piezo electric effect. The impulse of the strings is uh, translated into electricity and the electricity we can put through an amp and amplify it. Right, that's it. Everything in a nutshell, I would say. It's the most common way to um, get uh, a guitar like this um, amplified. Right? Um, this system is kind of neat because um, uh, normally a piezo sound uh, sounds a little bit sterile, I would say. There, I, I guess there are guitarists out there who uh, don't like piezo sounds. They prefer microphone sounds, and that's uh, why this one has also a microphone in it. So you can blend those two. You can either um, use the piezo only, you can use the mic only, or you can use them together. Um, yeah, so in this case, you can have the best of both worlds, right? Um, the problem with a microphone is uh, you get feedback if you turn it up too much. Even if you use it with an amp, as we do, um, um, at one point, there's too much feedback. So you can dial out um, the, um, the microphone and use the piezo instead, so to get rid of the feedback. This makes piezo pickups the more controllable option for on-stage performance, not only helping to silence unwanted feedback, but also allowing the player to free themselves from the tyranny of static microphones. Most of our artists use um, our guitars on stage, right? And they move around and uh, they can't have a fixed microphone. And even if you move around and uh, hit the corpus of the guitar, um, the microphone would be um, uh, would uh, take up this noise through the amp. With a piezo, it's not that strong, so you have more flexibility moving on stage and rocking out, and the sound guy can take care of the signal using a preamp or yeah, different different kind of uh, sound sculpting methods. Yeah. Speaking of preamps, the piezo element itself isn't enough to generate a usable signal, so it's used in conjunction with onboard active preamp systems. 
These come in a variety of different qualities and feature levels depending on what your needs are with the instrument. Ortega offers a few preamp systems of their own design as well as some more advanced Fishman units. We have um, more simple um, setups like our own uh, designed uh, Ortega Magus Pro. Um, um, this one has uh, a three-band EQ, of course. It has a built-in tuner, that's pretty neat. Uh, face switch. Um, but for this, you, as you can see, you would have to cut a little bit of wood out of your guitar. Um, I always recommend, if you are not a luthier or not very handy with woodworking, um, to go to a guitar shop and have it done there. Um, this one is a little bit easier to install because it's just um, the output of the guitar, right? And the, little um, volume and... Um, Tone wheel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so stick that to the inside of yeah. the sound hole, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is much easier to install than, than a preamp like this. Mm -hmm. And in our Spanish guitars, like the Sinline, um, we have um, Fishman Classica Blend um, preamps. And these come with the microphone. And the installation of these is a, bit, a little bit more complicated because of the microphone. Because the, the, the placement of the microphone is very important. If you place it wrong in the in inside the body, you will have a strange sounding. Yeah, 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 sounds, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Or too much feedback also. Yeah. So if you if you maybe getting too much feedback from your um, microphone in your guitar, maybe the placement of the microphone is also not correct. Yeah. It's not only the microphone placement that's critical. Ensuring the piezo is in the correct place is vital to picking up string vibrations effectively. So where's the piezo element on this guitar? It's under the bridge. So straight underneath the, yeah. the bridge here. Yeah. There's a ferro and uh, there, uh, in this ferro there lies um, this tube, this, this piazza tube. Yeah. And that contains all our piezoelectric crystals. Yeah. yeah. And we'll push our voltage. It's pretty simple. Nothing, nothing special, but yeah. If, you want, if you're searching for your piezo, it's down there. Of course, classical purists don't like the idea of any electronic equipment in their guitars, especially not piezo pickups, as they sit between the bridge and the guitar top. Their argument is that this inhibits the vibrational transfer and top resonance suffers as a result. I can imagine if you're, if you're in a studio and if you're a classical player and you want to have a full, the full sound of your instrument, you're not, doing, you're not adding anything to it because Everything you add um, to your instrument will change it a little bit. Um, but if you're on the stage and if you're play a playing a guitar like this with a cutaway and uh, with a preamp built in it, um, the, the piezo is the, the, this tube is the last thing that adds any mm -hmm. strange frequencies to to the to the body or to the wood. Yeah. The only thing is you have to um, if you install uh, install a piezo into your bridge, you have to to make it correctly so that um, every string sounds has the same volume because if it uh, lies not horizontal in the, in the ferro. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If it's not in line, you're not getting yeah. equal pressure across, yeah. across the whole thing. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's very important. important. Yeah. Of course, piezo technology isn't just constrained to guitars. Ortega used piezos in all of the different instruments, including their stomp boxes. And uh, we use uh, a piezo system also in our um, analog uh, percussion stump box. Simple piezo, another advantage of the piezo, it doesn't need any, any power in this case. So you don't have to power the pedal, you're just using the piezo electric effect. There's, there's some electricity going on, but you don't have to... You don't insert uh, any yourself. Self. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty handy, so um, less cables, uh, less, um, less power supplies on the ground. Makes it easier to play.
acting it. <laughs> that talented gentleman is Jay Leonard J, fellow YouTuber and very stylish performer who kindly agreed to demonstrate the piezo microphone blend on this nylon string guitar. With just the piezo. <laughs> And let's go blend in a little bit of that mic blend here. You can see it kind of gets yeah. a little bit more 3 d see Jay is obviously a performer and takes to the stage far more often than I do, so I wanted to get his opinion on piezo pickups and see if these are something that he would use while playing live. One thing you don't want to do when you're using a piezo pickup is expect it's going to sound like your instrument. and. Uh, but that you you have to use them because most of the pickups that do sound super super natural and super super clean, you can't really use them when you're dealing with lots and lots of stage volume, especially if you're playing like in a rock band or something like that, and they're really really powerful, pushing a lot of energy. So it's a it's a very useful tool, and you have to kind of learn how to dial them in uh, a specific way to make them sound really really good. But it's never going to sound like the real instrument, but uh, sometimes it actually sounds. A little bit better because they have such presence and such attack that it does help you get hurt a little bit better. video has given you a detailed insight into piezo pickups and how they operate. By exploiting the quirks of physical chemistry, we can utilise piezoelectric crystals to transform string vibration into an electric signal. While the signals that we obtain from this process are quite far removed from the real sound of acoustic vibrations in air, they do offer some distinct advantages to live performers, especially where microphones can be impractical. With the correct preamp and processing, they can sound pretty damn good, even going so far as being able to run acoustic instruments through distortion and other effects that you couldn't conveniently do with microphones alone. A huge thanks to my friend Jay Leonard Jay for helping me out in the demonstrations of this video. Links will be in the description if you want to go and subscribe to his channel. Thanks also to Julian from Ortega Guitars for getting in front of the camera and telling us all about their products. Links to Ortega's website will also be below. Lastly, thanks to Henning Polly for letting us use his house to record in and to all the other brands for funding such an amazing event. But that's all for now guys, keep it loud and I'll see you next time.